This is the 50th video supplement for CIS 351, Grand Valley State University's course on computer organization and assembly language. This video discusses cache replacement policies. Imagine we have a four-way set associative cache, and we have five variables, A, B, C, D, and E, and each variable is placed in memory such that all five have the same index but different tags, which means they all compete for the same line in the cache. Now, suppose we're running some code that happens to request the variables in this order. As each variable is requested for the first time, it's placed in the cache. So for example, when we run across that first line of code that requests A, A is loaded into the cache. And then when we request B for the first time, it's loaded in the cache and C. But when we request C the second time, that's a cache hit, so no new data is loaded in the cache. Likewise, when we access A and B a second time, but when we access D, then it needs to be loaded in the cache, and then A is a cache hit. But what happens when we request E for the first time? One of the variables on this cache line has to be evicted to make room for E. The algorithm we use to choose which one to evict is called the cache replacement policy. So take a minute and brainstorm some possible cache replacement policies. By that, I mean think of some different algorithms you could use to decide which of A, B, C, or D should be evicted. Here are some of the common suggestions that students tend to come up with. We could use a FIFO algorithm and take turns. FIFO stands for first in, first out, which just means when we have to kick something out, we kick out whatever's been there the longest, which in this case would be variable A. Perhaps the most common suggestion is to kick out whichever variable has been used the least, which in this case would be D. A slight variation on that is to kick out the one that's gone the longest without being used. This is called least recently used. And in this case, that would be C. If you start from the right, you have to go the farthest to the left before you come to your first access of C. And some students say, well, why not just kick one out at random? Now, because we're trying to consider all possible replacement policies, if we can do first in, first out, we could also do last in, first out. In this case, that would be D. Of the four variables, D was the last one to be put into the cache. And if we can kick out our least frequently used, I suppose we could kick out our most frequently used, in this case, A. That's not obvious that that's helpful, but we could. Likewise, we could also remove our most recently used. Again, this would be A. So with these in mind, and any others you may have thought of, take a minute and think about the pros and cons of each. Let's talk about LFU for a minute. LFU is perhaps the most popular suggestion by students thinking about this for the first time, because it makes a lot of intuitive sense. If you've got limited space, why not get rid of whichever variable you're using the least? But there's two things to consider. First, it's surprisingly expensive. If we're going to kick out the least used variable, we have to keep track of how often each one is used. And when you consider that a program runs billions of instructions per second, that's a lot of bits to count all that up. Plus, the adder you would need is somewhat slow compared to the speed you're looking for in a cache. Remember, memory performance is critical to CPU performance, so we need to keep this cache system as fast as we can make it. Also, the problem with least frequently used is it doesn't give variables enough time to get established. For example, when you access a variable for the very first time, it's necessarily going to be the least frequently used. You've only asked for it once. And so that puts it at risk of being evicted before the program has had a chance to run enough for us to figure out how often we are going to even want the variable. So although this algorithm is initially appealing, it's not all that popular. Random is also an interesting one to talk about. It's initially appealing for its simplicity, and as it turns out, it's surprisingly effective. Most people don't expect random decisions to be effective, but over a wide variety of programs, a random replacement policy doesn't do too bad. But it's not all that popular because doing randomness in hardware is more expensive than you think. You can't really do true randomness in hardware unless you do something like hook a Geiger counter up to your computer or something like that. And algorithms that do a good job of generating pseudo-random numbers are much slower than you'd want to put in a cache. 
And lastly, as you might have guessed, these last three are not all that popular because they kind of do the opposite of what we think should happen. But they are occasionally useful, not so much as a cash replacement policy by themselves. They can serve as important components of a complex or hybrid replacement policy. It turns out that the most useful and simple of all of these is actually least recently used. So LRU is such an important cash replacement policy that we're going to take the entire next video to focus on it. For now, understand that most cash replacement policies need to collect some data so they can decide which block to evict. For example, like I mentioned in the last slide, the least frequently used algorithm needs to keep a count of how often each block in the cache is accessed. This data has to be stored in the cache and contributes to the cache's overhead. The specific number of bits needed varies from algorithm to algorithm. But for consistency, I will always count these bits per line rather than per block. So even if the bits apply to a specific block, I'm going to group them all together and conceptually put them at the end of a line in the cache. So now you have a high level understanding of cache replacement policies and how they potentially affect the cache's overhead. In the next video, we'll focus specifically on LRU and a more efficient approximation of that called pseudo LRU.